is Craig Halgard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. Well, corn futures worked higher yesterday and posted a close above the range that corn has been in for the last couple of months. The 6-10 to 10 day forecast for hot and dry weather was the primary support to yesterday's market. Weekly export inspections were also supportive as they came in at a very strong 43.3 million bushels. After the close, the weekly crop progress report showed a crop that is off to a good start. 97% of the corn crop is planted with 89% emerged. And the crop is currently rated at as 75% good to excellent. A year ago at this time, we were only 59% good to excellent. In the overnight trade, uh, we're kind of responding to that good to excellent rating that came out after the close. And we have spot corn futures trading two cents lower as I record this. So I've been slumped to start the week with spot values closing three cents lower. Traders were disappointed by the lack of a follow-up sales announcement to China on the heels of last week's buying spree. The weekly export inspections report came in below expectations at 7.8 million bushels. After the close, the weekly crop progress report showed soybeans at 86% planted with 67% of the crop emerged. The rating improved by 2% over last week to send at 72% good to excellent. In the overnight trade, we have spot futures trading three cents lower. Kansas City and Chicago wheat futures were lower yesterday, while Minneapolis posted a higher close. Weekly export inspections were 15.9 million bushels, which was at the low end of trade expectations. The crop condition report showed a winter wheat crop that's 85% headed out, with 7% of that crop now harvested. Traders had been looking for a decline in conditions, but winter wheat was steady for the week at 51% good to excellent. Spring wheat is now 97% planted with 81% of the crop emerged. Spring wheat conditions improved from 80% good to excellent last week to 82% falling in that category in yesterday's report. In the overnight trade, we have Chicago 4 cents lower, while Kansas City is down a penny and Minneapolis is trading down 2 cents. Cotton futures were lower to open the week, with July futures finishing 98 cents lower, settling at 60.81. 78% of the cotton crop has now been planted, with 13% of the crop squaring. We did see the condition slip slightly, going from 44% good to excellent last week to 43% this week. In the overnight trade, spot futures are trading six points higher. Livestock futures had a split session on Monday. August live cattle finished the day 15 cents higher, while August feeder cattle finished the session down a buck ten. Lean hog futures were slightly stronger as well, with the July futures a nickel higher at the close. Class 3 milk futures had another good performance, with July futures closing up 27 points to settle at 18.94. And uh, as I record this, we're trading up an additional three points in the overnight trade. Meat cutout values continue to sell off. Choice box beef was $6.90 lower to close at $2.54.58. Select boxes were $15.30 lower as they settled at $2.31.12. Pork carcass cutout values were slightly lower as they finished down $1.90, ending the session at $70.88 per hundredweight. This has been Craig Halgard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. We'll be right back with more financial issues after this. 